Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue uh, looking at uh, uh, how to use Java for scientific computing and uh, I'm going to discuss a very, very important topic which is Java Native Interface or JNI. And what this does is actually Java pro provides us a way to call native libraries C or C++ or Fortran whatever that has been compiled from C or C++ we can definitely call it all right so when I say native libraries here I mean either a C or C++ library you probably can guess that these libraries are supported and called by OS, the operating system, and uh, they are uh, uh, saved as uh, static libraries typically, and we have some header files that uh, we can include in our programming. Those header files allow to generate a dynamically linked library, and we can use those to be able to dynamically call the static libraries that are already installed in our computer, in our machine, right? So one of the very important examples that I'm going to discuss is the, uh, uh, the GNU scientific library. And you can probably guess that because C and C++ have been around for many years and they are the lowest level that we can get to machine uh, language, right? The machine code except for assembly or maybe fortran i think fortran is, is a little bit higher level than c or c plus plus but maybe i'm wrong but these are definitely a higher level language than uh, assembly right so since these have been around and they are very efficient in executing math and scientific calculations so many useful scientific libraries are already written and available and most of them are open source in c and c plus plus one of the most important open source libraries scientific libraries is called gnu scientific library or gsl g s l for short and you can go to www.gnu.org slash software slash gsl and again gsl stands for gnu scientific library and uh, there is a pdf file gnu gsl reference manual again uh, gnu.org slash software slash gsl slash doc slash latex slash gsl hyphen ref dot pdf and it's again free full documentation it's free for download and you can download and go through it okay but uh, it's written for c plus plus or c programmers in this lecture we want to use java and link it such that it can call the functions in this uh, gsl library all right so gni gni provides the bridge that is necessary to call gsl functions or any native functions so i'm going to put an underscore here to call gsl functions so so JNI provides that bridge, but we have to do a little bit of work because uh, just like writing a usual C or C++, we have to have a header file that tells us uh, where to, how to call that function from this GSL library. Obviously, we need to have some knowledge of C or C++ because uh, JNI provides the bridge, but we have to kind of do some programming in C and do whatever we want to see and then uh, pass the results to uh, through this bridge to java all right so java here acts as a bridge and the general procedure to create the dynamic libraries that are compatible with java are these in step one we add the native methods to your class and then compile it into class file so if i want a method that call a function from native libraries i add the native keyword or reserved keyword in java to that method and then compile the class file at the java file and uh, create the dot class file and dot, that dot class file has methods that are uh, have the keyword native in them and then use we use java h or java c hyphen h to create the header file for the compiled class file. So th this header file is just a C or C++ concept, which means this header file is just a template or a declaration of what's going to happen, right? And I believe uh, up to Java 8, we had this Java H tool. This is an executable. You can execute it in terminal. And I think from Java 9, they removed Java H, but you can still use Java C, the Java compiler with the hyphen H uh, command 
to call the header generation functionality of Java compiler. Yes, yeah, so if Java Edge doesn't work for you, you can look into your installation folder of the Java and in the bin folder, you can see if you have Java Edge or not. If you don't have Java Edge, you can just use Java C hyphen Edge to create the header file for the compiled class file. And step three, create a C or C++ project and write the source code by importing the header file. So this header file is basically the one that the Java generates and we have to include it in our C++ project because it has some calls to the JNI library and it bas basically tells the Java and see how to uh, make this connection or this bridge. All right, so we write our C and C++ code and uh, compile it. And then uh, when we compile it, we create a shared library that also includes this header file from JNI or Java native interface. And typically in Windows, the shared libraries are uh, where first of all, these shared libraries are mostly most of the times called DLL or basically dynamically linked library. In Windows, they are the extension is DLL. In macOS, it's uh, Dilib or dynamic library. In Unix based systems like Linux, it's SO or shared object file. All right. So these ones are basic dynamic libraries that can dynamically load, uh, basically dynamically refer to other uh, installed library in our operating system. All right. So again, a step four, and uh, I guess uh, I mentioned this. So in Windows, these types of shared libraries or dynamic libraries are the extension is DLL. In macOS, it's di Dilib, and in Linux, it's .so, which stands for shared object. And then uh, uh, after creating the native library with the JNI header and create the shared library, what we need to do to actually be able to call, successfully call and execute these native methods in our class. We have to add the dynamic library to the Java path and we can do it with uh, the virtual machine argument dash or hyphen capital D java.library.path. So this sets a parameter or argument for the virtual machine equals and we set the path to the folder that contains this shared library, right? So we, this is a path to a folder that contains the shared library. So this is the step one. Step two, we need to, whenever we need to use that library, so Java by default, even if we set this path, it doesn't load it. So if we want to use any of those native methods before that, we have to tell Java, okay, load, actually load this library in the memory. And then Java says, okay, I know what the path is. So I just go and load it into the memory. So we have to manually load it into me memory for the first time. And we typically do it with a static initializer. So we have an initializer block, which starts with static in the class that we're going to use or load the native methods. And then we use the system class dot load library. And then we put the name of the library file. All right. So what this does is uh, Java goes and looks into all the folders that are included in the Java dot library dot path and tries to look at uh, locate a shared library that has this name. But you have to be very, very careful because uh, uh, because of this next point, how to properly call the native libraries. So uh, in macOS, when we compile, it typically starts, the name actually starts with the default lib and the name that we specify. So this lib gets added no matter what name we set for the library, the output library. And then we have the extension of dot uh, die lib dynamic, all right? But you have to make sure that when you write system.load library, <coughs> You don't include this lib, and then you also don't include dot die lib, right? So you have to have to drop the lib and die lib extension. You have to. So if you do not drop the lib, that is the, that the, is uh, the prefix of the name of the dynamic library. Java is not able to load the library. All right. So you have to again. See, I'm uh, putting a lot of emphasis on this. You have to drop the lib in the name of the library, right? So you have to drop it from the beginning of the name of the library. And I will have examples to really clarify this, all right? So 
you see this looks a little bit of a uh, uh, very complicated stuff but the good news is that there are IDEs or integrated development environments that have made this process fantastically easy and uh, the best one that I found that almost completely automates the process and you don't need to do anything is, is the NetBeans ID so that's what I'm going to use in these lectures although I typically use Eclipse ID but for this purpose of mixed development so this process is called mixed development we're using two languages to develop uh, some some code or some libraries so we're going to use Java but it's kind of mixed with C or C++ because we have this JNI bridge to call the functions from the C and C++ and try to basically uh, uh, use those functionalities and get the results and bring them back to Java through the bridge. So the best ID that I found uh, in my opinion is NetBeans ID because it almost uh, almost all the process is automated in the NetBeans ID and in NetBeans it even automatically adds this to the Java path of your library of your project so you don't need to even manually add this uh, path to your uh, java.library.path alright how do we do mixed development in NetBeans ID so NetBeans is designed for Java so but it has a plugin or extension to develop C and C++ uh, code so first you have to go to its plugins uh, and then install this C and C++ plugin and you can use NetBeans 8 or NetBeans 11, 12, doesn't really matter. All of them support this plugin. And after adding, an, and then you write your class file, you create your Java project, you write your class file, and it has some native methods. You write on the class file, on the Java file, uh, maybe let's say uh, dot .java file. You right click on the dot .java file, the class that you want to create the header for, and then uh, go to tools. Here, I have it tools and then there's an option mixed development all right and then it has a generate JNI library project so this create a C or C++ project depending on what you choose and which is related to this uh, Java file so it automatically creates also the, the header file that you need so it creates the Java project and then uh, it basically creates a JNI library project which is basically a C or C++ and then if you add more native methods all you have to do is update the header so you don't need to create uh, more uh, uh, C projects for the same Java file so what you need if you add more native methods you need to basically update uh, uh, the headers and the C code update the project not just create a new project right so we need to update the header file and then what you need you in the java file you actually click on the right click on the name of the class in the java file and select mix development and generate jni header this just updates the previously generated jni header so we're not creating a new project we're just generating a jni header again with the updated uh, names this just updates the previously created uh, header file and uh, uh, when you are done and you write your C code and include that header file and you want to compile your C, C++ project to create a dynamic library that Java can load, you have to uh, point the linker because in C we have a compiler and then the linking phase in the linker to the installed GNU scientific library on your computer. Now obviously the example here I'm, all, I'm just referring to the GNU scientific library but uh, you can use any other uh, library as well all right so let's head to netbeans and i'm going to create a uh, java project and then uh, walk you through the process so here's my netbeans ide i'm using netbeans 8.2 and if you go to tools and plugins and uh, in the installed one i have installed the c c++ plugin all right so C, C++ support, including editing, projects, uh, debugging, and making files. There is a basic support for Fortran and Assembler. All right. So this is a very good plugin. So I create my new project. Let's call it a Java. It's a Java project. Normal. Let's say I want to call it uh, uh, Native One. It's small letter. So it's a Java project. Uh, nat test native all right so I'm going to put in the default folder I don't want to have a main method and then finish 
so we have this Java project in the source packages I'm going to create a package let's call this uh, test one all right and here I'm going to create a class a Java class so test uh, one let's call it okay so uh, what do we have here so this is my class file it's in the package let's uh, get rid of these uh, uh, dog all right so what I want uh, I want to add a uh, let's add a constructor public test uh, one it's an empty constructor and then I want to have a public let's say double uh, uh, calc uh, or basically let's say multiply two numbers double a and double b all right so obviously we cannot have a non-abstract method without any body or implementation but what i want i want to actually implement this uh, using gni so i want this to be a native method all right so uh, basically the keyword here is uh, native is native keyword and then uh, this is kind of like a abstract method so we uh, basically what happens here is that there is no implementation there is no implementation all right of the method because of this native it's similar to having this abstract right but the caveat is that with abstract your class should also be declared as abstract but here the class is not abstract so we want to be able to instantiate it but here we want to have a native method all right so obviously we can also have a main method uh, public static void main string args and then we can uh, let's say we can instantiate this class test one uh, object new test one so we can instantiate it but then we can can we call the multiply yes so 1.1 2.2 and this returns a double double uh, let's say result and then what we want to do we want to say system dot out dot print line result all right now at the moment this compiles let's see and let's run it it runs so this compiles fine but it obviously uh, has it throws a runtime exception because it says unsatisfied link error so what happens here is that java says okay this is a native method so there should be a dynamic library that i can be i can be able to load and then call a method that refers to multiply it does something and it gives me back the result and just i grab the result and put it return it from this method but here it says I don't know which library to load there is no library I cannot find it all right so if I right click on the project go to properties in the run in the VM arguments there is no library added to this path so Java says unsatisfied linked error because this is supposed to be linked to a C a native library but there is nothing there so I cannot find anything that's why Java is throwing this so in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to actually create the C or C++ library, compile it, and then uh, uh, add the VM argument to point it to the folder that can load the native library. And then we have to also have some static initializer here because we are going to use the native library in this class. We can load it right at the beginning of the class. All right. So until next time. Uh, uh, Happy coding.